Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, Eye Care Genetics Case Conference, September 14th. I am Tua Pal, and what I wanted to now go through is um, we just released the Genetics Familial High Risk Assessment focused on breast, ovarian, and pancreatic cancer uh, just over two weeks ago. And I wanted to go through some of the highlights of this. I'm, I've am i been a longstanding member of this panel. I'm currently the vice chair of this panel as well. So again, looking at some of the highlights, we are actually the first NCCN guidelines panel uh, to put forth some um, information or recommendations focused on transgender, non-binary, and gender diverse individuals. So there's a whole new section on care, again, recognizing that there is a lot to be learned in this um, area of care. Uh, we also made some very significant updates to the Lee Fromaini syndrome section, um, both in terms of risks and in terms of care. And then check to an ATM, we also um, made some uh, substantial updates. So just to go through the um, bre uh, breast, ovarian, uterine, and prostate cancer risk reduction strategies for transgender, non-binary, and gender diverse people with hereditary cancer syndromes. Um, the way the section is set up, we have a general section, and then strategies for risk assessment and care, um, organs at risk, female versus male, um, risk reduction principles and strategies across uh, various organs, and then some additional considerations, recognizing there are some healthcare challenges, uh, educational needs, and a lot of research needs. And in this vein, we're actually hosting a an eye care case conference um, in December, so December 14th, for a panel discussion focused on care for gender diverse individuals with or at risk for inherited cancer predisposition. And I have a great lineup of speakers um, that have um, agreed to be our guest experts, um, who are um, Sarah Roth, Sasha Weiss, and Kimberly Zahowski. So again, we're really excited about our December case conference. And again, I would encourage our um, attendees to submit cases for discussion as well, if you're interested. Um, going back to the NCCN uh, guideline updates, uh, we did update the pedigree symbols, and this was um, aligned or just leveraging what NSGC had already put forth. So it's consistent with that. For the Lee Fermini syndrome testing criteria. And again, what I have is with the NCCN guidelines, I do find sometimes it's hard to find exactly what you're looking for. So on the PDF, it's page 34 of 161. So it's crit seven. But what again, we um, mentioned here is um, some expanded criteria for to, uh, for testing for Lee Fromaini syndrome, as well as those identified, like when do you do testing when you find a TP53 mutation in tumors? Because we all know that in tumors, this is a pretty common finding. So we put forth some guidance in that realm as well. There is a section um, in the management section on um, workup and management, depending on the etiology of the TP53 mutation found on genetic testing. And again, you see that there are various components that we took into account, you know, type of specimen, um, tumor variant allele uh, frequency, uh, parental testing, offspring testing, and how the management might look. And what I, again, wanted to point out here is with the tumor variant allele frequency, <clears throat> what you see here is zero to 100%. So basically what we're saying here is, again, it doesn't necessarily matter what the variant allele frequency is. There are some parameters that are much more important. And then looking at Lee-Farmani syndrome, again, what you see here is 
we talk about, we put it into a little bit of a different format, which is hopefully easier to read, but breast cancer, other cancer risks, as well as other aspects of managing uh, Leifermani syndrome. And we added a specific section on pediatric surveillance, which again, I think we all know that there are some implications to pediatric patients with regard to Leifermani syndrome, but now they are in um, these guidelines. And then looking at other gene specific updates with ATM and CHECK2, there is an emerging, there is emerging evidence for an association with increased prostate cancer risk. So we did put in there, consider prostate cancer screening starting at age 40. The CHECK2 I157T variant, which again, uh, imparts a risk of less than 1.5 fold. For breast cancer, again, that is fairly common and you know many of us are seeing it in practice. What we put now in there very clearly is additional cancer risk management based on this, on solely this variant is not recommended. So again, scaling back care. And again, just as a reminder, this is a variant that um, other the testing labs in other countries outside of the US don't even report out. So again, um, we tried to clarify that, that. with PALB2, the risk reducing salpingophorectomy age was changed from <clears throat> what we had in there, which was 45 to 45 to 50. Um, that makes it also aligned with some ACMG um, uh, practice guideline um, information that we had put forth a couple of years ago, which was led by uh, Dr. Mark Tishkowitz. Um, in males, we thought it would be reasonable to consider screening similar to BRCA1, meaning um, mammograms, and then pancreatic cancer risk we outlined as two to 5%. And then with P10, we actually changed the age of the mammograms from 35 to 30. And then there is this um, summary of genetics, inherited cancer information um, across all of the NCCN guidelines that we had included in um, our breast ovarian pancreatic guidelines last year. But we updated this table to reflect the new inherited cancer content across all of the NCCN guidelines. And this is a table that we're hoping makes it easy to locate, like if you're looking for a specific cancer type, you can go to this table to see if it is, if there, there is content on whatever you're looking for in um, another guideline potentially. Again, what I would remind everyone is that each of the NCCN panels functions independently. So this is not necessarily a reflection of what our guideline, the breast ovarian pancreatic guideline um, is advocating for or saying, but rather we're just pulling in information. So this is strictly informational rather than something that's coming out of our guideline panel. And then I just wanted to highlight something else. I, I get these um, notices from AMBRI with uh, AMBRI Genetics with educational opportunities and updates, important papers. Um, and they, uh, they um, went through the guidelines, these new guidelines, and put page by page, put some of the, you know, salient changes, some of which I've discussed. But again, I find these useful as well. So again, if anyone is interested in getting these, I'm sure you could um, reach out to Jessica Scott and be added to their distribution list if you wanted. And then uh, last thing I wanted to mention is our, we had put forth a um, check to practice resource um, again, where we highlighted the I157T variant and its lack of utility when we're making management um, 
decisions with individuals or cancer risk management um, decisions. So we have um, our next eye care case conference scheduled for October 12th, where we are going to be talking about management of individuals with CHECK2. Um, the co-leads of this uh, um, ACMG article uh, are Helen Hansen and Doug Stewart, and uh, they will be our guest experts leading this. Both myself, uh, Mark Tishkowitz, and many others were also involved. Nicoletta was also involved. So many of us have been involved in this, in the development of this practice resource, but Doug and Helen will be our guest experts next time. So we're excited about that.